I'm a bad boy. G'day guys, today we are going to be changing out the automatic transmission fluid. So this isn't a full flush, you'll still have fluid in your torque converter and through the system, but we're draining the transmission pan. We're gonna remove about 60 to 70% of it. Ordinarily, this wouldn't be too hard a job, but with the BT50s and the Ford Rangers, it's quite a messy job. There's no drain plug in the oil pan. You can either undo the oil pan, there's about 20 odd screws, and then it sort of creates a mess, or you can try what I'm gonna try, which is to extract the oil with an oil extractor and have less mess when we actually detach the oil pan from the body. The other difficult thing about this is refilling the transmission fluid. With the BT50 and the Rangers, you need the transmission on, you need it hot and up to temperature to make sure it's flown through the heat exchanger and you need to get your hands up between the exhaust and the transmission with the car on to check your levels and you have to fill it up or take away automatic transmission fluid with the car running and hot. I've actually already done it recently when I did the automatic transmission cooler at the front, I had to add some oil. So I've been through that process already. So there's a number of reasons you might want to do this. If you've just done a long trip, if you've been towing something, carrying a very heavy load or driving in really hot stream off-road condition, then it might be worth checking out, doing a flush, putting some protection on and just looking after it a little bit. The reason I'm doing it is because I've just fitted a transmission oil cooler. So I want to make sure that the transmission oil itself is fresh at the point that the cooler's gone on. After that point, I know that everything's been looked after. I always keep an eye on my automatic transmission temperatures with the ultra gauge. If I put fresh oil in there, I will know that it's never exceeded a certain limit and I can leave it for another 100,000 kilometers or 150,000 kilometers. So if you've just bought a car and you're unsure on the condition, may as well change it. If you've done a lot of towing, change it, put some protection on. So after I do this initial change, I only plan on changing it every 100,000 kilometers or thereabouts, just as a maintenance item. It's not something you should have to change very often. So the reason that I didn't change the transmission oil completely when I did the transmission oil cooler is because I didn't have a replacement gasket, which you don't need, but I wanted as backup. But also I needed that service kit to get the filter. But now the kit's arrived, so I have a gasket. They are reusable, but now I have the new filter to put in, which I didn't have before. So now I can do a proper service. So we're going to need a fair bit of transmission fluid. I'll let you know at the end of the video how much we need. I've got about eight litres here. I've got another litre or so over there. So I've got about nine litres all up. This is an extraction pump. This will help me empty the oil pan before I have to drop the oil pan so I can create less of a mess. And I'll use this to measure exactly how much comes out. These are just some hose attachments for that. I've got nitrile gloves for the dirty work. I've got these thicker work gloves. That is for checking the dipstick when the car is running and hot because those gloves there are inadequate. Got a 19mm spanner to loosen the filler slash dipstick plug. And over here, some paper towels. We got more fluid. This is just a storage container. And I've got a one litre hand pump that I'll be using to pump the fluid back in. And then you might need some degreaser and brake cleaner. So I've got the car jacked up. You don't have to have the car jacked up. I find it easier because I don't have too much clearance here. And take off the relevant bash plates just so you get access to the transmission. Obviously we'll have to drop this when we do the final fill up because the car has to be hot, the transmission has to be hot. So I look into the front of the car here, got the exhaust, this here's your transmission pan. So this is full of oil and there is no drain plug on this. Now what you normally do is remove all these screws, tilt the front down and try and catch it all in a large oil pan. This here is a 19mm socket. This is our filling point, and it's also built into that as a dipstick. Just on the other side of the transmission, we have our gear selector cable, and you can see this is kind of in the way. We want to drop this pan without spilling anything, whatever remains in the pan. We don't want anything in the way that's going to knock it off center and also affect us trying to get our bolts out. So this gear shift lever, I'm going to take off. Two bolts up here to take off. And then this hopefully just pries off here. We'll get a pry bar and take that off. And then that should be out of the way. I'm just going to take this off, 19 mil spanner. So for some reason these do get very tight even though they don't get done up. So there's your inbuilt dipstick. You can see how high the oil level is here. So that's obviously not the correct way to read it. But the car is off at the moment. And you see those two hatch marks? We have the A and the B. 
when we check it, we need the car to be hot, we need it to be at the top of B. Okay, so I've stuck that tube in as far as I can. Without any kinks, I've tried to make it a nice sweeping bend up and out and into here. So now we'll start pumping, we'll see how much we can get out. So I've pushed that in as deep as I can go. And basically you give it seven to 12 pumps and then you just leave it and it just keeps working away. It's quite hard to see where it is, but it's just above two liters, about two and a half, almost that line there. I'm hoping to get possibly four or five liters out and then there might be a liter or two left in the pan as I drop it. So I'll just leave this for a while and then I'll come back and check on it and see where it's up to. At the moment, I'd say it's definitely paid for itself. So much easier to do without making a mess on your garage floor. It's mostly just sucking up air now, but you can see this line here is four and a half liters and that's basically, it's just a tiny bit above that. So we've removed four and a half liters from the pan that we don't have to worry about dripping out. I think there's still more in there, but hopefully it's below the line of the gasket and I'll be able to control it, keep it in the oil pan as I lower it to the ground. I'll be able to empty the oil from the pan into this oil drain pan. And then I'll pour that oil in here. The only reason is that then I can measure exactly how much I need to put back in. Just as a rough guide, I'll still do it properly by taking the car for a drive. But whatever I take out the transmission oil pan will go in the oil pan underneath the car. I'll pour that in here and I'll know how much to put back in. So all of these are M8. So what I'm going to do is loosen all these towards the front of the car, especially, and start cracking the back ones. And then I'll just see if anything starts coming out, in which case I'll try and catch it. If not, then I'll have to try to take this down and then pour it into this oil pan here. And they don't get done up very tight. It's about 12 Newton meters. So you shouldn't have trouble cracking any of them. All right, guys, so you can see what I've done. I've taken out the front half and then I've left in about halfway, taken it all the way out and then turned it in one full thread on both sides. Then I've loosened going back to the back of the car, just enough so the weight is on the front there. Now what I can do now is I can put my hose back in there and make sure I suck out whatever's left before I drop this, just to ensure that I don't make a mess. So with this gap to the front, I'm going to stick my hose in and see if I can get more oil out before I drop this. Alright guys, so I wasn't able to get any more oil out using that method, or well, not really, which is good because it means that we've basically got the majority of it that we can get. So I can feel just from the weight of that that there's a fair bit of weight in it. So that's the last bolt out. I just want to drop this evenly, if I can. Hoping that I've gotten rid of all the oil already. So be ready for that filter to drop, that adds a fair bit of weight to it. And just drain all this oil into this pan that I had ready here. And there is oil in the filter and everything as well. Now I'm just using the oil pan here as its own catch pan for the transmission, which is dripping oil. So here's the transmission. Now I'm just going to leave the pan here. It is catching oil at the moment. These here and here, they are magnets. So I'm going to take them out later and have a look on both sides. These magnets catch tiny little metal shavings that come off gears and solenoids and whatever else floats through the transmission oil. We'll just have a look at both of those later as we clean them with brake cleaner. So I'm just going to let this drip clean. And then over there, poking up with the rubber cap, that's our filter. So we will be changing that. So that adds quite a bit of weight when it drops down, so just be ready for that. So we're up to six litres here. I've drained that drain pan that I had into here. And then I drained the transmission drain pan as much as I could up to the six litre mark. So we've got about maybe 300 mil left in there. So when I put it back in, I'm going to put 6.2 litres in and then I'm going to take it for a drive and then top up that last little bit when the transmission's hot. So I'm going to drain all this and then I'll clean everything, we'll look at the magnets and we'll look at the gasket. Here we've got the oil pan, the old filter and the original gasket. It's going to clean everything down with brake cleaner into here, then I'll drain this into the oil drain container. Clean this, put it to the side on paper towels. I'll just show you these magnets. So any, anything metallic, any shavings and stuff get attracted to this. So you can see it has tiny, tiny metallic shavings in it. This doesn't look too bad, but this car's only done 40,000 K, so it shouldn't look too bad. 
See this one has like a pasty sort of bunch of crap on it. So we won't be cleaning the filter because that's going in the bin. The filter, you see it's got this little rubber grommet on it. So that's good because that means it's not stuck up in the valve body. So the new filter that we've got here has its own little rubber grommet that will push up so we don't need the old one. So we can use a microfiber cloth on this. I just don't want to rub anything too much to the point that we're going to leave any traces of it. But these are all smooth edges here so it should be fine. Where the magnet sits, you'll have a bit of stubborn dirt. So we'll just clean the outside as well while we've got everything there. Just gave it a wipe down with a microfiber cloth, but I didn't go around these holes just because I don't want any other cloth to tear. I just did the inside here where it's nice and smooth. Just want to make sure this is all dry. Let the brake clean completely evaporate before we put everything back together. We have a new filter to fit. So this gasket is in pretty good condition and could be reused. Originally that was my plan, but I figured I'll actually keep this old one as the spare and I'll fit the new one instead. While I've got everything open, I might not get back to it for a long time. I hope I don't have to open it for another 100, 150,000 Ks. So I may as well fit the new one now. There's no point buying something and not using it. So that being said, here is the new gasket. I've actually paid for the OEM gasket, so this should be exactly the same. Uh, this isn't an aftermarket one at all. This is the proper metallic one with the rubber insert. We just want to make sure the inside half of this outer rim is clean because that's where the rubber will seat against and that is where the seal is made. Even though you have a new gasket, definitely go through and check all the rubber, make sure it's in good condition. I'm just about to put this back in. I'm going to put the new filter in first. I just wanted to show you the magnet position. So one there and one there that's how they came out so that's where i'm going to put them back i'm going to try to get the transmission oil pan up now i'm going to try to push this filter this is a new filter we've got our little rubber grommet up here i'm going to try to push this into position and get some bolts threaded and then these drips won't be an issue after that but it is annoying having to work through these drips Just paranoid about this filter, so I'm going to double check that it's still in. So I was worried that I had knocked the filter out of place, but I hadn't. So these are 8mm socket, I'll go through with the torque wrench, but before we get to that stage, I just want to take the weight of the pan and then we'll torque it. You don't want to torque them when half the pan is not even supported by the screws. Alright, so now they're all done up, you can't move it with your finger, we'll go grab a torque wrench. 12 newton meters on these, M8. And I'm just going to go across, work my way out, and then all the way back down. Now that all these are torqued up, I'm just going to put this selector lever back on. Two bolts are 25 newton meters. So it is very annoying getting a torque wrench up here, because you've got these fuel lines here. You need the right combination of extensions and sockets. And that's it, just make sure that's hooked up on there as well. So now that everything's back together and torqued, I'm going to fill the transmission with this. This only does a litre at a time. I'll do 6 litres or 6.1 litres, and then I'll do the final top up when the car is hot, and we'll go through that process after I've filled it up. So we'll just have a look at two snippets. One is a 6R80 workshop manual, and the other is just a Haynes manual for the Ford Ranger. First up, 6R80 transmission workshop manual. It says that the vehicle is safe to drive when the fluid is in the cold level range. And it also says that we need to go through all the gears, hold them for five seconds. Down here, it explains that there is two areas on the dipstick. We want it to be at the higher level of the dotted marked area when the transmission fluid temperature is at 91 to 102 degrees Celsius. So all of this is kind of key to remember. We'll go back over it. And up here, it just states that you have the engine idling while you're checking it and you have it in park. Here we have the Haynes manual. So I just want to highlight here where it says it takes 400 mils to go from the bottom of the hatched area to the top. That is 100% accurate with what I found. Okay, so we've got the gear selector cable back on. Everything's torqued up and I've introduced six liters into the transmission and I've put the fill plug back on. So what I'm going to show you now is the process that you would do to check your transmission oil levels. I'm going to do it with the car still on the stand so I haven't taken it for a drive yet. So the first step is that we get in the car, we turn it on and we go through all the gears. We hold them for four or five seconds. So 
So before you pull into the driveway, make sure you've got your oil pump ready to go. Now this is just me with the car on, so there's no audio for this. But I'm just showing you that you can get your hands up there with some decent sized gloves, but still maintaining some dexterity. You can get the dipstick out and in. Now what I'm looking at here is making sure I've got enough oil on the dipstick before I even go for a drive to get it up to temperature. You want to do this in your garage cold, make sure you have enough oil. Uh, you're registering just below the A mark on the dipstick when it's cold, and then you can go for a drive and heat it up. So it's not quite coming through there, but it's just beneath the A mark on the hatches. So I put this in, then I took it off the jack stands, and I went for a drive. I monitored the transmission temperature using an ultra gauge, and I got it up to 84 degrees. If you don't have an ultra gauge, I recommend going for at least half an hour and doing a lot of driving at 100 kilometers an hour because that really gets the transmission temperature up. Now the process I went through with the car on the ground was exactly the same except I had less ground clearance and I couldn't get the cameras in there but the whole process is exactly the same. So the reason we have to take the car for a long drive is because we need the transmission temperature to get up past 84, 85 degrees. So the thermal bypass valve will open, allowing your transmission oil to flow through the heat exchanger. I don't have a heat exchanger because I've got the oil cooler now, but I need the transmission oil to flow through that oil cooler and take up every available space and work out all of the air from the system. Now, if you were unsure how much fluid you had extracted or drained because you hadn't measured it, what you'd need to do is check your levels with the car on before it's even hot. Just make sure you get some sort of representation on the dipstick. You want it to get it up towards the A level and then it's actually safe to go for a drive and get everything up to temperature. So you've gone for a drive, the transmission's got up to temperature, that valve's open, it's flowed through the heat exchanger or your oil cooler. Then you pull into the driveway, the car's still running and then you check it hot. And that is where we top up. We're trying to get to the top of the B mark or just beneath that. If you're at the bottom of the B hatch mark, about 400 mil worth of transmission oil will get you to the top. So if you want to go half a hatch mark, it's roughly 200 mils of transmission oil when it's hot. Top up or extract oil with the car running. Once we get it spot on, we put the dipstick and the plug in, tighten it up, and then we turn the car off. All right guys, so I've just come back and done the hot checks. I had this ready to go because you don't want to be messing about. Had a litre in there, it's down to 250. So all up that's 6.75 litres. You know, give or take 100 mil that I've had to put in. So that's 6.7 litres. The total system according to the workshop manual is nine litres. So we've actually flushed a fair bit of the fluid there now. And we shouldn't have to look at that again for a long time. Don't be too scared to get your hands up near the exhaust. It's not too bad. You just grip the dipstick between your fingers. Have everything ready under the car, your rags, your spanners, your gloves, hearing protection, eye protection, all that sort of stuff. So you just pull up, you jump out, and you kind of just back it off. You, use, you just use your fingers to lift it and lower it down, have a look at it, clean it off, put it back in. Uh, my hands, they don't really come close to the exhaust. The transmission itself is warm, but we're not wearing no gloves, we're wearing a thick set of gloves, but they're not welding gloves. So we can still grab the dipstick in and out. We still have some dexterity. All in all, not a fun job, but you shouldn't have to do it very often. Make sure you get your dipstick and your plug in tight before you turn the car off so you don't get anything spilling out. And that's basically it, you're done. You go recycle your oil, put your bash plates back on, uh, degrease once the car cools down, if you wanna degrease the exhaust and everything. And that's it for the transmission fluid. Pain, we'll, go, we'll run through the... To check your transmission.